everyone, welcome back. I thought I'd film a get ready with me today using a whole bunch of new products that I've sort of amassed in the last few months. So I wanna try them on my face, but I'm also going to kind of a book signing thing. It's not quite, but I'm going to meet Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer. They are doing this book signing thing in Toronto and the book's already pre-signed, so I think you really just line up to take a photo with them. Went and got my wristband early this morning, lined up for only about 30 minutes, which was pretty good. Paid for the book, got my wristband, and then I came back home so I could like do my makeup and stuff, because I really just rolled out of bed to go there. So I'm gonna do my makeup with all these products, and then if I have any footage of the event, like the pictures and stuff like that, I'll put that at the end of this video. So for now, I'm just gonna whack my hair back. I'm planning on curling it, but I need it to air dry a little bit more. I blow dried it, but I don't like to curl it right after I've blow dried it because it's a little bit too fluffy. It needs to go cool first. So this is nothing new here. I'm just gonna start off with my regular eyeshadow primers. Um, starting with the Lorac one, which I am very close to the end on this one. Eh, there we go. So for people who are unaware, Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer are figure skaters and they compete in the ice dancing category and they won the Olympics this year. So I got really interested in them during the Olympics. So I did figure skating competitively in my teens, quit when I was roughly 17 and then just sort of like fell out of love with figure skating because I was so used to training like 20 hours a week that I was just kind of like done with it. And for whatever reason, the Olympics, not for whatever reason, because of Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer, during this past Olympics, I fell back in love with figure skating. I went back to lessons in the spring, uh, didn't do it over the summer or the fall, um, but I'm planning to go back in the spring again. So they've really reinvigorated my love for figure skating and I'm so excited to meet, well I've already met Tessa, I met her at the Nivea media event, was that back in March or April, something like that? But I've not met Scott yet. So I just kind of want to walk up to Tessa and be like, so we talked about me going back to figure skating and I actually did, so thank you. <laughs> Because at the time I had told her, you know, like, I'm 35, I'm too old, I haven't done it in almost 20 years. Um, but she really got me thinking about it. And then I found a coach and I went back to skating and I got my axle back. So I was really pleased about that. For eyeshadow today, I'm going to be going in with the Maybelline Soda Pop palette. This thing is gorgeous, but I haven't seen it yet in Canada. So I picked this up in the US in October when I was visiting New York City. And I think it's stunning. So I really think that this looks similar to the Too Faced Peanut Butter and Jelly palette. So I have high hopes for the colors in this palette. I am also going to be using the Stila Liquid Glitter in the shade Fairy Tale. So I'm going to do something that kind of goes together between these two. We'll see how it comes out. This is also a little bit risky because I'm going to something where I don't want to look stupid in front of Tessa and Scott, but I've never used any of these products before. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go in with Ginger Ale right over here and use that through my transition area. That is basically my skin tone. Okay, to deepen up that transition color because you can barely see it, I'm going to go in with Cola Float right here. I don't want this look to be too orange, so I'm going to try to go lightly. That is a lot of pigment, and that was not lightly. I think I had a little bit of purple still on this brush. Yeah, definitely from the last time I used it. Oops. I'm a little bit panicked because I only have about an hour before I need to go back out. I'm within walking distance to where the event is being held for um, the book books. I keep calling it book signing, but it's not a book signing. Um, but I just, I don't want to be late. <laughs> okay, well that eye came out better than this one, but that's because I had pigment still in this brush. Ugh. For the lid, I'm gonna use Soda Fizz over here. Oh, that's nice. That one's really smooth. Now, I am gonna end up covering that color with this because I think they look pretty similar, but I do want to use it as a base regardless. The Stila Glitter and Glows don't really need a base because they have a, a decent amount of color in the, um, within the glitter but I like putting something down anyway, just in case there is a gap in any of the parts of the glitter. For the outer corner area, I'm gonna go in with Cherry on top. So in other news, I got a new job, which is very exciting. Some people may be aware that I was on a mat leave that was a contract for nine months, which is very scary, but I took it because it was um, some job level jumps, which uh, mean more responsibility, but also more money, which is very, very nice but it was a nine month contract. So it basically said that as soon as February comes and I have not found a new job at the bank that I work for, 
I'm out of the job, which is very scary. And for the last month, I have been very panicked. But just yesterday, actually, I'm filming this on Thursday. Um, on Wednesday morning, I got an offer for a job at the same bank and I'm very happy about it because it's with people that I think I'm going to really enjoy. I've met them for a few times for interviews and for coffee chats and really liked how I interacted with them and how they spoke about their department. So I'm really looking forward to it. And I have to tell you the immense relief that I feel knowing that I'm not gonna be out of a job come February is like, I don't even have the words for it. I'm just very relieved right now. And it also means I can start planning my vacations next year because everything was really just up in limbo because I couldn't plan anything because I didn't know if I was gonna have an income. So at the end of the day, the job jump was worth it for the temporary mat leave, but man, was it stressful. I enjoyed the job itself I've been doing during the mat leave, but just knowing that you don't have a permanent position at that point in time is terrifying. Okay, I like how that came out, but it's not quite deep enough, so I'm going to try to deepen it up with root beer over here. And just put that on the very outer corner. For me, if I don't put something deeper in the outer corner, I really don't like how my makeup looks. Like, if this is too soft and just doesn't add any kind of dimension in there, I can't stand the way my makeup looks. I'm always so disappointed in how I look like in pictures or on camera with it. And yet I see other people with like light outer corner colors and they look beautiful and I just I hate how it looks on me. But I think that's deep enough. So now I'm gonna do a brow bone highlight. Now the colors in here are actually a little bit dark I think. Like, Chilling and ginger ale basically look the same, but I'm gonna see if chilling works on my brow bone. That's too yellow for me. Okay, uh, I knew this might happen, so I grabbed my MAC quad over here, and I've got a very much beloved Blanc type up here, so I'm just gonna use that on the brow bone. I'm trying, oh, there's so much yellow on there. I am trying so hard to finish this up but it takes forever to go through an eyeshadow. This is the only brow bone highlight that I use and have used in probably the past year and a half and it, it's still going. Like it's on the outer ring, but I'm sure that this will last like four more months. Okay, before I move on to the glitter, I'm gonna do my liquid liner first. This is nothing new. This is just the Physician's Formula Eye Booster. And the reason I put my liner on first before I put the glitter on is because these can be a little bit chunky and the liner doesn't always glide over top of the glitter properly. So I wanna make sure to put the liner on first and then I'll layer the glitter afterwards. Okay, so the liner's on. I'm gonna go ahead with the glitter now and I actually like the applicator that's in here. I know a few people don't, but for whatever reason, it really works well for me. So I just go straight in with this on top. That's funny. The glitter is almost exactly the same color as the eyeshadow I put down. I mean, the glitter's got more dimension. I can see purple and sort of silver and stuff like that, but it's pretty close. When I get to the outer corner here, I just sort of try to lightly fade it out. And if the fade's not very good, I'll go back in with my eyeshadow brush and just sort of buff over top. But you have to be aware that if you do that and there's a lot of pigment on your brush and this hasn't dried yet, the pigment clumps will stick to the wet parts of the glitter and make those areas look a little bit darker. So wait for this to dry and go in very lightly if you're gonna be buffing with your eyeshadow brush afterwards. I prefer not to, but sometimes you kind of have to. Now, these are pretty good at not creasing on me, but I do like to let them dry before I completely open up my eyes, if I can. For my inner corner highlight, I'm gonna use this shade right here. It's called Tonic. Okay, so I've done most of my eyes, but I don't finish them up at this point because I prefer to apply the rest of my face. So I'm gonna go in with a new foundation. That I, there it is. The Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin. I've had this for a few months now. I've been waiting to try it because the shade ended up being a little bit too light for me. So I'm hoping that this is gonna match me now. This is Y225, which is what I wear in their regular Ultra HD foundation. So I'm hoping that this is gonna be the same color. And I'm going to be trying a real beauty blender for the first time ever. I've only ever used the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge and everybody says that this one is better. 
I have been using the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge forever because I refuse to spend the money on this thing because it's so expensive. You can get the sponge, the RT one, for like five bucks. This one's like 25. So I've just never purchased this. And then my friend D gave me one because she didn't need a second one. And I was like, are you sure? But I was very curious to try it out and she was more than happy to give it to me. So I'm gonna see if this is actually any different than the Miracle Complexion Sponge. I don't think it is. I think people just feel like it is because it is more expensive, but we're gonna see. So what I like about the Makeup Forever foundation already is the fact that it's in a squeeze tube. This is so great for travel. If a foundation doesn't have a squeeze tube, it needs to have a pump. I'm sick of these ones where you just like tip it over on your hand. It's ridiculous. Or the ones with like the spatula on the inside. That thing is the most irritating contraption ever. I dislike it immensely. So this is full coverage. So let's see how this goes. I think that's gonna be a good match. I do tend to like things that are a little bit more yellow and Y225 is more yellow. And I think that's gonna match my neck. So let's go ahead and do it. I hope I didn't get too much on my finger here because it feels thicker than I was expecting. Probably because the Ultra HD foundation feels quite liquid that I was just expecting this to feel a little bit lighter as well. Because that's the one I have the most experience with from Makeup Forever's foundation ranges. I went through an entire bottle of the Ultra HD. Okay, let's see. It feels no different. <laughs> I mean, it's working nicely, but it doesn't feel any differently than the Miracle Complexion sponge does. This foundation is going on nicely. It's really pushing in nicely which I really like. I don't like when something just sits on top of your face because inevitably I feel like it's just gonna slide off later on. Okay, I like that. I don't feel like this sponge is any different. I am glad that I discovered that because now I can use this one up and not feel like I need to repurchase a $25 sponge. Ooh, I don't know how people spend that kind of money on sponges. I don't like spending money on um, makeup tools really. Um, to each their own, but for me, I just, I'd rather spend the money on the actual makeup. Okay, so for bronzer, I don't really have a new product, but it's somewhat newish to me. It's Benefits Hula Bronzer. Now, I think I've only used this once before, and I have no opinion on it because I only used it once and it was probably about a year ago. So I'm gonna try this out. Everybody used to rave about this product, and I just never really got around to trying it. Um, and it's been sitting in my collection for a little while, so let's give it a go. I always put bronzer in the same area every single time. It's nothing interesting. It's just like here and then down there a little bit. Although I like to apply less bronzer on my jawline in the winter because of the problem with jackets. I hate getting that kind of like foundation bronzer stain on your jacket collar. Ooh, I think it's so disgusting. Um, and sometimes I'll just wear a scarf that covers <laughs> this section of my face to prevent that but I try to put a little bit less down here. I think it's nice. I think it's a little bit more subtle than I was expecting because a lot of people said that they needed the Hula light color, which I don't have. Um, but I mean, I guess if you're more fair than me, you'd want something a little bit paler. I'm never a very good judge on if bronzer looks natural. <laughs> I just plop it on and then hope for the best. I think it looks okay though. <laughs> so for blush and highlighter, I'm gonna go in with this beauty. This is the NARS Hot Trist Palette, and I just picked it up during the Sephora sale. Whew, it's stunning. I am drawn to, well, these two um, blushes right here. Hmm, I think this one up here might go a little bit better. This is kind of that gel -A formula. Um, so I'm gonna go in with a brush that's a little bit stiffer, and the blush that I'm using is, this is confusing. I think it's called Adrenaline. I'm trying to go lightly because I'm very heavy handed with my blush and I feel like this could get intense quickly. On camera that doesn't look like that much but in person that is heckin bright. So I'm gonna have to blend that out with my sponge in a second. Oh that color is pretty though. Okay so in person that is super bright so I just take my foundation sponge that's still got product on it and then just sort of buff out the edges and if it's really strong I'll go directly over top of the blush which it really is right now. So for highlighter, I'm gonna go in with the slightly darker one because I think it matches my eyeshadow a little bit better. And I think that one's called Friction. 
Oh yeah, that's pretty. Not too dark either. When I first saw these two colors, I was like, yeah, this one's gonna work, but I don't know about that one. No, it's fine. Totally fine. Okay, I'm gonna move on to my brows and I'm gonna be using the Inglot, uh, what are you called? Brow Liner Gel. This is from the JLo collection. It's called J501 Taupe, but they have basically an equivalent shade in their regular gel liners if you can't find the JLo one in particular. Um, the colors are interchangeable and I think the number is 11, but I'll be sure to link to it down below in the products that I'm using. I always, always list every single product that is on my face and on my nails and even what shirt I'm wearing, although often my shirts are like three years out of date because I don't buy a lot of clothing. Um, but if you're ever curious about something that you're looking at visually on me, all the information is 100% always in the description box. So this product isn't actually new to me. I've been using it for quite a while. I went through a whole pot of the regular one that's not the JLo version. And then I had the JLo backup, so I was really happy. So what part do you hate about doing your makeup? For me, it's this. <laughs> All right, done with that. So I'm gonna move back to the eyes and finish up the eyeshadow. So I'm gonna dip back into here and I think I'm just gonna go for that cherry on top color and then just put it all along my lower lash line. Now I tend to take my eyeshadow quite low lately because I like how it looks sort of blown out, but I really struggle with blending right under there. My under eye area has never taken to product very well. Hates concealer, that's why I never wear it. And blending eyeshadow is proving to be equally annoying. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. I'm gonna move on to mascara. I've started using the CoverGirl Clump Crusher again, just because I really remembered loving it ages and ages ago, and then I you know, started using other products. Since going back to this, I can say that it's not as good as new mascaras that I've been using. I think it's great for longevity, it doesn't transfer and stuff like that, but I also don't feel like I get a ton of volume off of this like I do some of the other mascaras that I've gravitated towards in recent years. It's great though, don't get me wrong, it separates, it provides enough volume, and I think it's one of those everyday mascaras that most people will enjoy. I know I've recommended it to a lot of friends and they love it, but for me, I prefer a little bit more volume. That being said, this stuff is the best on the lower lash line. I tend to get a ton of transfer from my lower lashes onto my lower lash line, and I hate how it looks, but this one doesn't do that. All right, so this is gonna be a bit dramatic for a Thursday at 11 a.m., but I'm gonna put on some false lashes. Now, Osquito makes my favorite brand of lashes, and they are mink lashes. I don't know what to think about mink lashes anymore because I had thought that minks were just being brushed in order to put the little hairs on the lashes. And I was like, that's great because that's cruelty free. And then I kind of read a little bit more and it seems like the mink farms where these minks are housed in order to brush them are not that great. I don't know what's true. It's really hard to get to the bottom of the mink lashes stories, but I'm happy to say that Esquito is now putting out fake lashes. like. These are synthetic completely. So I really like Esquito's bands and how they wear on my lashes. So I'm happy that these are completely synthetic. So I'm gonna give these a shot. Okay, I just tested it out. Uh, no glue on it yet. I don't think I need to trim it, which is fantastic. And these are really subtle. So I'm not gonna look like a drag queen at 11 a.m. on a Thursday, which is a good thing. <laughs> the thing that's life-changing for me about Esquito lashes, while I'm waiting for this lash glue to dry, is that the band is made out of cotton which makes it very flexible and comfortable, so it's much easier to get that band to conform to the shape of your eye, because we've all got different eye shapes. And sometimes bands that have no flex to them only really fit a certain kind of eye shape. So I like the Esquito ones because they are super bendy and they'll mold to any shape that you're gonna throw at them. So that's why I've really enjoyed their lashes in the past. By the way, this particular style is called PBNJ. Okay, lashes are on. I'm just gonna put on some lip primer first. This is the MAC Prep and Prime for lips. Just go a little bit over top of my lip line because I don't want to bleed out. And this needs to set first. It needs to go tacky because otherwise it just feels like a lip balm, which is not what you want. It is a lip primer. So while that is drying, I'm gonna put on some of my Inglot Coal Pencil in 05 on my lower water line. And then with my liquid liner, I'm just gonna go back over the band so that I cover the glue completely. Okay, my lips have gone pretty tacky. 
So I'm going to use Max Mare lipstick. This is not a new product at all. But when I talked to Tessa at the Nivea event, uh, she said that this was the color that she wore during her Moulin Rouge performance at the Olympics. And it's funny because this color goes with so many things. She wore a red outfit and I was like, why would you wear like kind of a basic pink with it? It looked fantastic and it's going to go with my eyes too. So that's what I'm going to use. And because I get these irritating bumps at the edge of my lips, I have to go in with a lip brush just to clean it up. So I'll just kind of swipe a little bit and then clean up that bumpy edge. Okay, that's the lipstick on. I'm a little bit in a rush, so I'm gonna run through these products quickly. The eyeshadow palette, I really like it, but I definitely need to play with it more. I do really like the overall color aesthetic of this, and I like how this look came together. As for the Stila Liquid Glitter and Glow, I love these intensely, but I do have to point out that these dry up in about a year. So if you buy one, use it consistently. That being said, I think they're stunning. They give such beautiful dimension on the eyes. This one isn't as glittery as I was expecting for a glitter and glow. Yeah, it is a glitter and glow. There are some shimmer ones that have a little bit more of a subtle glow, but I had expected the glitter one to be a bit more chunky. I feel like this one's more on the shimmer side of things, but it's still absolutely beautiful. As for the foundation, I really like how it's wearing on my skin. It feels dried down. I'm not getting any transfer at all. I do feel like it's a little bit more yellow in person than what comes across on the camera. And I don't know if that's just because I'm wearing a lot of pink on my face, but overall I'm really enjoying how this feels. As for Benefit's Hoola Bronzer, I think it's nice, but I don't think it's like groundbreaking. And maybe it was groundbreaking when it first came out like what, 10 years ago now? It's a good bronzer, but it's no different than a lot of other products I own. Now the NARS Hot Trist Palette. I'm pretty much gonna be in love with this thing. I think the colors that I've put on are really beautiful. I've kind of tried to tone it down a little bit um, just because the colors can go on very bright. I like that there's two highlighters and four blushes. This is going to be a fantastic travel palette. And I've long lamented the fact that most palettes in this sort of format don't provide enough variety of shades and this one definitely does. So I'm happy to see that. As for the Esquito lashes, I really like them. I probably could have trimmed a little bit there because it's kind of tickling me a little bit on the inside, but these hold true to Esquito's brand. They are comfortable to wear. The band was flexible and easy to apply. And I think that's fantastic if you're looking for not actually mink lashes because Esquito has always been like at the topmost level of quality as far as I was concerned in terms of construction. So I'm really happy to see that they have some completely fake lashes here as well. As for the Beauty Blender, this feels no different to me than the Real Techniques sponge, so I will continue to buy the Real Techniques sponge just because it's infinitely cheaper. As for Max Mare lipstick, this is nothing new to me at this point. I have had it for several months, but it's one of those colors that I feel like people used to talk about a lot and just kind of disappeared over the years. It's a really easy to wear color and it has matched a lot of eye looks that I've worn in the last few months. Like you compare this with something warm and you compare it with something cool. It's a very easy to wear pink color and I can see why Tessa Virtue chose it to wear during her performances. It's a matte lipstick so it's not gonna transfer all over the place and it's just comfortable and a beautiful color. All right, I think I covered everything. I gotta go curl my hair, get out the door because I'm gonna go meet Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer and get my signed copy of their recent book relaunch. They had put it out years ago but they updated it after the Olympics this year. So. I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching this Get Ready With Me. And if there's any footage of the event, I'll slide that in right now.
been an hour, but I did just meet Tessa and Scott. Uh, it was a really nice setup actually. So it took place at a bookstore called Indigo here in Toronto. It was at the Bay and Bloor location, which is very close to me, so I'm walking distance away. And they had it set up really nicely, so there were groups of people that went up to talk to them. I mean, you spoke to them individually, but you were grouped in an order that uh, was based on how you had shown up that morning to get a wristband. So the queue was really well done, organized, that was so nice because sometimes you can get like an absolute mob of people at these kinds of things, but they managed it really well. And they had it set up so that you could give your jacket to somebody and give your camera or phone to somebody for a picture. So I thought that was fantastic because I didn't have to worry about all this junk that I was carrying. So I handed my real camera to the woman who was gonna take my picture with Tessa and Scott and her reaction was kind of like, a real camera uh, because I didn't want to get a crappy quality photo on my phone but um, in the end I think I got a slightly blurry picture because she didn't quite maybe know how to work the camera I don't know either way I got a nice picture with them but I have to say when I first walked up to them I shook Scott's hand said hey it's nice to meet you but then I turned directly to Tessa and basically ignored him because I had met her at the Nivea media event several months ago and she had encouraged me to go back to figure skating just not necessarily like, oh, you should do this, but like, oh, why did you quit? You know, yada, yada. And I had said, you know, I'm 35. I can't imagine going back after almost 20 years. And for whatever reason, whatever she had said to me at that event really stuck in my head. And I had gone back to figure skating. So I was able to tell her that. And I just thanked her for kind of like pushing me in the right direction until I got my axle back. And <laughs> Scott made some comment that was like, oh, you're better than us now. And I was like, okay, well. Thanks for making a joke, but we all know that's not accurate. So it was just a really nice interaction. It happened really, really quickly. So my words mostly came out in like a verbal diarrhea because I find them very inspiring. So I find it difficult to be a normal human being around them. Anyway, it was a really nice event. It happened so quickly, but I'm glad I got the chance to speak to both of them. And it was just nice to be able to like say to Tessa, you know, like, thank you for inspiring me and pushing me back into figure skating. So as you're exiting the queue after you've met them and taking your photo, they hand you the book that you just bought. And I hadn't actually picked this up yet, so I'm glad I waited because you had to buy the book in order to get in line to meet them. And I was gonna pick it up, I think about a month ago, and I was just like, eh, just hold off on it. You don't need it right yet. And I'm glad I did because this is a signed copy because they signed them before they got in line to meet people. This is an updated copy of their original Tessa and Scott book. They redid this with more pictures and more information after the most recent Olympics. So I'm super happy to have this. And it's tied into like a really good experience. So yeah, today was a really good day. I hope you enjoyed the get ready with me. As for the makeup, I mean, it's only been an hour, but it seems to be holding up on my face. I really like how the look came out, and uh, that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.